still would do a thing like that. Gosh, it gives me goose pimples. Yeah, it's plastic. Oh, what's the use of hashing it over? I warned her. She thought she was smart. I know, but I feel sorry for her parents. Honest, I do. Oh, June, why feel sorry for her parents? If they paid a little more attention to the kid, maybe it wouldn't have happened. Her parents aren't so bad, Francine. No, they're not bad. Nor is your old man. But just let you be 15 minutes late and he'll beat you black and blue. Sally, you don't need to tell everybody about Dad. I don't have to tell them, I know. Hey, kids, any of you get a note to report to old man Moffat right after lunch? Yes, I got one. Must be serious when the principal calls you on the carpet. Gee, I've been absent so much this term, maybe... Brought notes, didn't you? Yes, but my mother didn't sign them. So what? Well, I'm scared. I copy mother's signature off for canceled checks. It's always worked, though, at least till now. Keep it up, kid. When you graduate, you'll get an A in penmanship. Oh, gee, kids, I got an idea. I bet you. I bet you you never had an idea. Oh, I did, too. I bet you they're going to ask us about Lucille jumping off a pier. What do you know about that? Oh, oh, nothing. Do you see what I see? Oh, I was right. They are policemen. Sure, they're cops. Look, you don't know anything, any of them. Cops never give anybody an even break, understand? I know, but I don't know anything to tell them anyway, Sally. Neither do I. Well, that's good. I can tell them plenty, but I won't. Oh, Betty, you be quiet. You talk too much anyhow. Oh, let her talk. She never says anything. Sure, look at them, them Seamuses. They got to put on a show, don't they? Where's it going to get them? Well, anyway, we weren't mixed up with what happened last night. She was really a nice kid. Yeah, but no angel. What do you mean? Well, she used to hang around the merry-go-round, didn't she? Say, that's right. Do you think that Nick had anything to do with it? Listen, Roy, you better not think that out loud. If Nick hears you, you're liable to lose your ears. And he ain't kidding. You know that Nick's a plenty tough guy. Oh, gee, fellas, I didn't mean nothing. Oh, forget it, forget it. Well, I read it's forgotten. It's as safe with me as the grave. Say, Jerry, how fast will this egg beater of yours go? Oh, she'll do 75 in a second on a hot day, I guess. What do you mean? Why, the other night we didn't even have it down to floorboard and we were doing better than 100. Gee, someday I'm going to have a car that'll do better than that, even. I'll see you guys later. There's Sally. I want to see her. Yeah, so take it then. easy, Jerry. So long, stupid. Oh, hi, gee, Rocky. Hiya, Jerry. Hiya, oh, kid. Jerry. Hiya. Say, uh, Sally, uh, I got a bright idea. Could I see you at the drugstore later? Sure. Swell. See you then. Bye. Okay. Bye, Jerry. Oh, there's Rocky. Excuse me. Sure. Rocky. Hiya, June. Hello, Rocky. You know... I waited for you until nearly 9 o'clock the other night. I felt like an awful sap. You knew there must have been a good reason. Yeah, yeah, I can guess, but... The fellow thinks all kinds of things when... Well, when he's... When what, Rocky? When he stood up like that. Hey, you weren't out with nobody else, were you? Of course not, Rocky. Swell. All right, Jackson Jill. Hi-ho, we might as well get it over with. Hey, nobody gives their right name. But they know me. That's their tough luck. I wonder, how did she mean that? Oh, well. <laughs> I really don't know, Mr. Moffat. I think she's afraid she might involve someone else. June, this police officer is here to help us. We want to prevent unnecessary tragedy, not punish anyone after it's happened. You do want to help us, don't you? Yes, sir. But I didn't know Lucille very well. She had different classes than I. By the way, where were you last night? I was... I was to the library. Alone? No, sir. With Sally Higgins. I see. Thanks. Shall we have Betty Smith now? All right. Betty Smith. Oh, I am a Smith. Oh, I'm fine. I'm lovely. And how are you? Uh, you knew Lucille Dillon. I'll say this. We've been friends for years, ever since we were children. Oh, ain't it awful? You know who she went around with? Well, gee, no. That was one thing. She didn't ever tell me anything private. Said I was a blabbermouth. <laughs> Imagine that. And I hardly ever say a word. Or maybe she was afraid I'd steal one of her boyfriends. <laughs> gee, now I know. You sound just like Dick Tracy. Is he Dick Tracy? Betty. Now, <laughs> be a good little girl, and I'll let you know when I hear from Flat Top. Go sit over there. Sally Higgins, Joe. The 
did you send for me? Why, well, yes. Uh, Miss Higgins, you know Lucy. Never heard of her. You've read the newspapers. No, I only look at the funnies. Sally, that's not the proper attitude. All right. I know from nothing. I forgot everything I ever knew. You happen to know where you were last night? Well, I'll tell you. I went home, did homework for three or four hours, cleaned house, scrubbed the kitchen floor, got my old lady supper and went to bed. So what? Sally, you know that's not so. I told them we went to the... True. Well, you, you know the dirty little the paddle the... Oh, oh, swat! Oh, oh, girls, girls, please, please. please. Sally. I just told them that we went to the library. You heard what she said. We went to the library. What's wrong with that? Nothing. We're not making any headway, Mr. Moffat. I'm sorry. All right, girls, back to your classes. Sally, what are you so mad at? Oh, nothing. I thought you squealed. Anyway, I'm allergic to quiz programs. And isn't it funny? I just love quiz programs. Would you like to talk to some of the boys now? I'm afraid, gentlemen, that would be a waste of time. Do agree that preaching to the kids won't accomplish much. They'll be running the streets tonight again the same as ever. Gee, Sally, I've got to get home, really. Oh, Jerry's going to drive you. It'll only be a minute. Well, I wish he'd hurry. I've simply got to get home. Father will be furious. Oh, June, someone ought to beat that old man of yours to a pulp. Stop him! Please, please, hold up! Stop him, Bolivia! Yes, please! Yes! Twice, hold up. Two women, one man. Getaway car. Dark roadster probably hopped up. License one for B for Boston. One. Balance not obtained. Description. Last reported speeding north on Highway 8. Repeat, hold up, two women, one man. Two women and a man, bunk. Three kids, if you ask me. Okay, wind her up. Nothing to worry about. We got chaperones so we can deal with the Bobby Sox trade. It's legal. What's the matter with you? You're making dough, ain't you? Money. Money, yes. But most of all the money we make, I give to you. And what do I get? You get me, baby. Oh, I know, Nick. Whenever there's nobody else around, you're all for me. Oh, they'll never get us. This thing can do a hundred. Nice going, Jerry. Jerry. Oh, Nick, it's okay, Jerry. Accident. I saw it. But we're in a jam. All right. Get this heap out of here and hide it. Sally, who's this? Oh, she's all right, Nick. Always asking for trouble, aren't you? Oh, wait a minute. Take her inside and lose her in the crowd. Thanks, Nick. Now, you won't take them in our place. Remember what happened last night? Will you shut up? Come on, hurry up. Get this thing out of here, Jerry. Okay, Nick. He's hurt pretty bad. Why don't you go take care of those kids? Let them take care of themselves. 
Why don't you be nice? Now listen, Mimi. Don't talk too much. All right, all right. Did you see this? Yeah, we were right over there. Hand those, Joe. Okay. Where's the car that hit him? About 40 miles from here, the way he was traveling. Could you describe it? Not good. It was one of those big old jobs, built like a locomotive. Wasn't it, baby? Yes, it was a big automobile, and green. Green, eh? Did you happen to catch the license number? That's almost a silly question, officer. Yeah, I guess it is. No, no, I mean he was going so fast. Yeah, I know. You're Mimi, aren't you? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm... I'm gonna look your place over. What for? Nothing. I'm just curious to see how the other half lives. You know, the, the younger half. Sure, any time. It's all open and above board. <laughs> You're a terrific... I'd give anything to ruin rugs like you do. <laughs> Sally, how could you do it? Oh, shut up. It's a mess. <laughs> Judy, ain't you glad you came? How come you've never been here before? Oh, I just love it. This place just sends me. Aren't you thrilled? Oh, listen, Zippelip, why don't you dry up? She's got a headache. Well, gee, I never get headaches. First, you gotta have a head. Yeah. What did you say? Skip it. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. <laughs> oh, oh, gee, look, kids. A policeman. Well, take a good look. Much obliged. Oh, maybe we're going to be raped. Oh, be quiet. Sally, you don't think... No, Nick can handle cops, I know. No, Mimi? I don't like the job of decorating you, Tell. No? What's the matter with it? You see these tables? If I were you, I'd put in a lot of cradles. Huh. You police think you are very, very funny, don't you? Well, I don't think so. We never ask him what you think. Well, maybe it is better you don't ask me what I think. Uh, don't mind her. She's got a bad temper. We're running a decent place. What? Regular Sunday school. Oh, the kids are all right. Let them have fun. They don't get away with anything. We watch them. Yeah, with chaperones. On the merry-go-round payroll, eh? Sure, why not? It's legal, ain't it? Oh, sure. sure. It's legal. <laughs> <laughs> what do you expect to find, liquor? No. How old are you? She's 17. What are you doing, playing games you tried to pump us this afternoon? You're her mouthpiece, eh? No. She just isn't used to flat. I mean, policemen. You don't seem to be bothered that way. Hello, Hannah Ann. What's the dope? Are the kids mixed up in this? Steve, this is... Nick Gordon. I know, Nick. Nick Gordon, Steve Cronin. Evening dispatch. Newspaper man, eh? Uh-huh. Step outside of me, huh, Steve? Sure. You stay here. Okay. Oh, gee. They're leaving. Oh, ain't that too bad? I've just been sitting here dying, waiting for some excitement to start. Listen, deadhead, you're having fun. Why don't you be quiet? Sally, can't we go? Oh, no. The kicks are just about to start. I hope you're satisfied. That policeman is suspicious. Oh, forget it. He's just another dumb pavement pounder. <laughs> the trouble with you is you think too many people are dumb, including me. Oh, no, baby. You're smart. Oh, is that so? Well, after what happened to that girl last night, you better get smart too, dear. We're in the clear. We had nothing to do with that. Come on, let's have a drink. This one's registered to Nicholas B. Gordon. That here is Cole. Well, it doesn't mean he's got a clean slate. Say, just what have you got against this, Nick? Nothing as yet. He's a cool customer. Am I talking for publication? Strictly off the record. Look here, Hannah, and you and I are both working toward the same end. This kid situation. Only you're using the law and I'm using the press. What do you say we get together? You reporters always figure the police are hiding things. Now look. 
places like these, licensed and operating within the law, that are responsible for half the juvenile delinquency in this country. Well, that's part of the cause, yes. It's up to you and I to find a cure for it. Well, I'll try to close the merry-go-round. That may help some. Hannah Han, you're always popping off about closing up the honky-tonks. You've closed four or five now, and what good has it done? You're always tearing down. Why don't you try building things up once in a while? Be constructive. Well, I'll admit that something's got to be done. What, I don't know. Maybe it'd be a good idea to turn the kids loose in a place of their own. Maybe you've got something there. But closing that merry-go-round is the first on my list. Okay. Have it your way. And so they'll go looking for a great big sedan for a couple of days, then it'll blow over. Believe me, you're in the clear. You're quite a guy, Nick. Oh, it was a cinch covering that one up. Say, uh, what kind of a touch did you make with Jerry? Candy store. Could you take us home? Sure, anything you say. But you better get hold of yourself. You're nervous. That's no good. Oh, I'll be all right. Nick's right, June. Compose yourself for a while. Suppose those cops are waiting for us down the road. You'd blabber all over and be curtain for all of us. Oh, I would never tell anything, Sally. Well, wait a while, then we'll go. How about a sandwich? Oh, no. Well, I don't know what to do. If I don't get home pretty soon, my father would be terrible. Oh, that old lemon squeezer. Is that all that's biting you? I'll fix him. I did it for you before and I can do it again. Where's the phone? You know where the phone is. I mean, have you got a nickel? Yeah. Can I make the call for you, too? Sure. You can talk to Frano. Sally, don't. Please don't. Oh, stop worrying. Hey, baby. You're among friends, eh? Mr. Thompson, this is Mrs. Hagen, Sally's mother. Yes. Well, I'd love to have June stay here tonight. But they're doing homework. Uh, uh, the music? Oh, why, that's the radio. Oh, no, no trouble at all. She's such a lovely child. Really, Mr. Thompson? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. And thank you so much, Mr. Thompson. Good night. That pension's off your old man for tonight. Sally, you sure know all the angles. Couldn't find out a thing. Well, I guess that's all for now, Joe. Report into headquarters. Tell them it looks like the hold-up and the hit-and-run tie in together. We're working on it. Right. Steve, I've been doing a lot of thinking, you know, about these kids. Yes? What's missing today is the old-fashioned family circle. Now, when I was a boy... Yes, yes, I know all about it. When you were a boy, you rode around town on a horse and buggy four or five miles an hour. But today, things are different. Today, things are sizzling. That is all. Miller, off. No, Hannah Han, I'm afraid you're wrong. I mean the old family circle went out with a bustle. But it's not coming back, believe me. What we need is something to replace it. Something new. What? Well, your guess is as good as mine. See you later. You know, Miller, sometimes I almost believe he's right. <laughs> Dance with me, Nick. Sure. Anytime. I'll be right back. What's wrong now? I said I'd be right back. That guy killed me. Anything I can do for you, Mr. Crum? No, not particularly. Well, if you're thinking of brightening up the merry-go-round, I hope you make it a good one. Anything you want, son of the house. Thanks. Enjoy yourself. Feel better? Oh, yes, thank you. How about a little something to pep you up? A little drink? Oh, no, thank you. Hey, what about me? You don't need it, babe. Oh, there's Jerry. Gee, I'm glad he didn't get caught. Hello, Rocky. Oh, hello, Roy. Oh, Jerry, hello. Hiya, sweet. What do you know? Bet on papers? 
June, I never expected to find you here. Things happen. What did Jerry tell you, Francine? Nothing. What should he have told me? Nothing. What's up, Nick? Inside. Oh, that rug's been cut up enough already. I'll dance. You just walk around me. But gee, Sally, I just got my shoes shined. Why don't you give in, Roy? That's just what he's going to do. Come on, Roy. Well, all right, but just this once. What do you think happened to you? Rocky, well, how about you and me wrestling in rhythm? <laughs> no, maybe later. Huh? No, well, I'll go knock myself out with somebody else. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> June, how come you're hanging around a joint like this? Rocky Webster, you have no right to ask me such questions. What are you doing here yourself if it's so awful? Well, it's, it's different for me. Well, it's no different than... Oh, stop it. It's just that I don't want to see you get your fingers burnt, that's all. As if you cared. Well, it may sound wacky, but I do care. Oh, Rocky. You stuck up a candy store, huh? Yeah. How much you get? Two dollars and eighty cents. You're lying. You heard me, Nick. You little dope. Two eighty. How many times have I told you to lay off those kind of jobs? I'd I know the old geezer didn't have more. Now get this straight, Jerry. I don't want to catch you fooling around with those petty larceny rackets anymore. All right, all right. Where's that car? It's in a place. They'll never find it. Get rid of it for good. What do you mean? I know all the angles. Oh, a wise guy, huh? I, uh, I hang around with you, don't I, Nick? Never mind that. Take that heap apart and junk it, understand? Listen, Nick, I ain't gonna junk that heap. Listen, you! All right, Nick. All right. All right, now get out of here. Go out the back way and keep undercover, understand? Okay. Okay, Nick. But don't rush me. You're shaking me to see what these put here. You sure kick around yourself, kid. <laughs> Have you any of that jivey what? <laughs> it goes to your hitsy wetsy. Oh, but I've got some of that jivey wivey that goes to your tootsy wetsy. <laughs> well, give me, give me, give me. Still here. Have a drink? No, thanks. Just leaving. Come back again sometime. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was fun. <laughs> cool. No, nothing in it. <laughs> Rocky, do you want to take me home? June, are you out of your mind? Well, you go home and there's no place else to go. Oh, let her go if she wants to go. I'll go find Cherry. All right. What are you doing here, Rocky? Oh, I was looking for Jerry. You don't see him, do you? No, but I didn't mean nothing. Okay, beat it. Take your nickel somewhere else and don't come back, understand? Oh, gee, Nick, what did I do? I was just looking for Jerry, that's all. Means nothing to me. He's a small-time screwball. Well, I ain't. I'm on a level, Nick. I'm all right honest. Yeah? How do I know? How do you like this? Where'd you get that? It's my old man's. That's poison, kid. Ah, uh, it ain't loaded. It broke, and I thought maybe you'd lend me a couple of bucks on it, that's all. Yeah? Oh, maybe I will. Drop it in there. How about five? Make it three. Oh, if my old man ever finds out Never about it. Never mind about that. Just so the cops don't find out about it. And let me tell you something, Sonny boy. Never carry a rod unless you got a reason to. Understand? Can I get it back, Nick? Sure, when you pay me. Forget it. Come on out and play. Thanks, Nick. Mr. 
policeman. What can I do for you? Not a thing. I'm doing all right. Ah, it seems like you always are. You're such a busy character. Hey, the cops. Beat it. Out the back. You back again, what do you want? Get out of my way. What's the big idea? Who's that kid? Never saw him before. Hmm. He knows his way around pretty good for a stranger. Any of you know that boy who just from the other office? No, sir. He wasn't with me. Honest, he wasn't. Maybe you'll remember later. How about you? Uh-uh, not me. You? She doesn't know him either. Uh -huh. Officer, what is the beef? That boy is all right. I will vouch for him. Oh, isn't that just fine? Mimi, it might be smart to run these youngsters out of here tonight. The law says so? No, just a friend. Just a who? I said a friend. Oh, la, la. What I think of my friends, they could not print. And that goes for you, too. I'll remember that. All right, son, come on along. Honest, officer, he's been with me all evening. You sure of that? Yes, I am. Well, in that case, you better come along, too. But all right, officer, Joe. I... Take him out. Come on, get your coat. Come on, come on, let's get going. We'd better clean house. Smart guy, huh? Now we go broke. Listen, baby, I believe in cooperating with the police. You heard what he said, run him out tonight. Tomorrow's another day. Once you are right, all right, we close up. Everybody go home. Okay, kid, go home. Please talk about tonight's dance. Kid, scram, scram, go home. Now I'm closing up. And you too. Please, Ali, Ali, Ali. Go home and go back tomorrow night. We'll have some more fun. Gee, isn't it a shame having to go home so early? Maybe it's better. Oh, don't be a droop. Oh, look, uh... Tell your old man you decided not to stay at our house or something. We haven't got the room anyway. I'll have to make up something. Well, make it good. Maybe one of the kids could take us home. Nothing doing. I'll take you both home. Gee, Nick, do you really mean it? On the level. Well. Where do you think you are going? I'll be right back. I heard that before. And you'll hear it again. Oh, you, you, split chick. Where you get out, Sally. Well, I thought we were going to take June home first. I want to talk to June. Good night, Sally. Good night, Nick. Wonder what she's so mad at. She'll get over it. Hey. What's your hurry, beautiful? I didn't say I was in a hurry. As far as I'm concerned, the night's still young. Well, let's start right from here. Why not? Wait a minute. Why did you leave the merry-go-round tonight without telling me? Oh, Nick thought I was wide open for the cops. Someday I'll get even with that guy. Wouldn't try that if I were you, Jerry. You know that Nick stops at nothing. Let's forget about him. Let's just concentrate on you. My mother might hear it. Then who knows, Nick might come back. Okay, let's go some other place. All right. Nice evening for a ride, especially with you. Oh, yes. Would you mind pulling up over here? I live just down there. I wouldn't want anyone to see me coming home at this hour. Okay. Good night. Wait a minute. Do you have to go now? Oh, yes. If my father should be away... I'll go with you. Oh, no. No, thank you. Good night. Daddy, what are you doing up so late? 
reading the paper. I thought I'd better not stay at Sally's after all. That is very thoughtful of you, Jewel. I talked to Mrs. Higgins. Yes, I know. I talked to Mrs. Higgins, Jewel, not Sally. Oh. What a nice daughter you turned out to be. A cheat and a liar. I'll make a decent girl out of you yet. But, Daddy, let me explain. You can't explain anything. Daddy, let me tell you. You can't tell me anything. Don't you ever come running back again to me with your lies. Me scared. Hey, you weren't you weren't thinking of doing that, were you? Oh, June, that's no good. That's what Lucille did, right here too. I know, but I'd never do a thing like that. Then what are you doing down here so late? My father was waiting up for me. I was just afraid to go in. That's all. What are you doing down here yourself? Oh, I can't go home either. The cops would be waiting for me. I wish there was something I could do. Oh, Rocky, I don't care what happens. But I'm not really bad. Uh, somebody ought to sock that old man of yours. Oh, come on, June. Maybe it's best you go home anyway, huh? No, I don't want to face him yet. It's so quiet and, I don't know, kind of peaceful here. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. But you can't stay out here all night. Oh, June, this is all wrong. Nobody ever gives a darn about us kids. We have feelings the same as grown-ups do. I wish we both could get out of this town. June. June, let's get married. Married? Yeah, I'm married. What could anyone do about it after we did it? But you're not 21 and I'm only 17, Rocky. So what? Martha Washington was only 15 when she was married, and look what she got, a president. I'd, I'd never be a president. I'd sure try and be a top guy to you. Oh, Rocky, I don't know. I'm afraid. Afraid? Of me? Oh, June, I'm not so tough as I seem. It's just that when I was a kid, I found out if you go around with a chip on your shoulder that, that most guys are afraid to knock it off. Once in a while, you've got to fight your way out. You gotta be hard boiled to get by. That's all. I didn't mean that, Rocky. I do like you. You're the only one that's been kind to me. June, I know a kid I can borrow a car from. You look 18 and I'll, I'll say I'm 21. What do you say? Well, if you think it wouldn't be a mistake. I think it would be. A very bad mistake. Don't you ever go to bed. I can't sleep. You kids keep me awake nights. All right, come on. Both of you. Hey, you ain't taking her no place. Oh, yes, I am. We're all going to see Judge Craig. Now, come on, Rocky. Come on, Jim. You're okay, kid. Suppose we knock over a little gas station, get ourselves a little easy cash, and have some fun along with it. You know, Jerry, I got a big thrill out of knocking over those soft touches. You and me both. Sally, how about using your car? Okay. What are we waiting for? Not a thing. Let's go. All right. Look.
What's he doing with Rocky and June? Well, it's a sense she isn't taking them home. He's not taking them anywhere. What are you going to do? You remember that cop we ducked in Oak Grove? Yes, but this cop's no farmer. Yeah, well, we'll soon find out. Hello, Jerry. Hiya, Rocky. Hey, officer, they didn't do anything. How do you know so much about it? Well, we were with them. Well, you were with them, eh? Yeah. Listen, why don't you go jump in the lake and leave us kids alone? Every place we go, you pop up. Well, we won't go into that right now. I don't believe them. They weren't with us. They're just trying to cover up for us. Hey, wait a minute. Wait All a minute. of you, wait a minute. The second part, I think you better all come along. Come on. Oh, oh. Be reasonable, will you? I'm here? reasonable. Hey, why don't you cool off and let us alone? But mind about that. Out of here while he's taking a bath. Yeah, come on. Rocky, you've got to help him. He might drown. Rocky, June, hurry up. Rocky, throw something to him. Let's get out of here. Why did you throw him the rope? Oh, Sally, you just can't do things like that. Oh, isn't that just too bad? Listen, Softy, Jerry and I are going to knock over a gas station. Do you want to join us? No, I'm going over to Betty's. Well, come on, let's go before that car gets out. Ah, come on, June. I do tell you. Um, Mr. Fay, can I talk to you for a minute? Uh, sure. I don't think you have any money. Oh, yes, I have. Here, what's that going on? Yeah, we're at. Right down around the first turn. Okay, swell, then that's it. Best hamburgers in the country. I said all the trimmings. What's well, got everything? Onions, mayonnaise, greens? Yeah, well, there's something else I want. It's in that register there. In the register? Yes, in the register. The greens. Now hurry up and put them in that sack. Step on it. we get this time, sugar? Thirteen simoleons. Less than twenty bucks. You wouldn't hold out on me, would you, Jerry? Count it yourself, beautiful. You see that freight over there? Sure, I see it. What about it? Pulling out before morning for a big town. We could hop it. Why hop it? We can take my car. Don't be silly. That car of yours is hotter than a lightning bug on a mustard plant. Oh, well, we'd be picked up before we even got out of town. Yeah, but even so, the few bucks we picked up last night wouldn't last long in a big place. We'd make more. Why, I know a fellow back east would give us 60 bucks a week, guaranteed. Well, that would tide us over till we could make it on our own anyway. 
I don't know. Nick wouldn't like it. Nick? What's that guy got to do with it? Will you forget about him, Sally? I'll marry you if that's what's bothering you. Oh, I don't know what to say. Maybe we better wait a while so I can think it over. Wait? Not me. I'm leaving tonight. Either you're coming with me or you're not. Oh, all right. Only I'll have to go home first and pick up a few things. Now you're talking, Sally. I'll meet you right here in one hour, okay? Sure. See you later. Are you looking for a ride? Sure. Oh, I'm dead tired. Glad to give you a lift. Where do you go? Oh, uh, just down the straightaways. Not very far. Working a night shift, eh? I guess you could call it that. Keeps me out late. That's too bad. I'll be glad to drive you right to your door. Thanks. Oh, we're practically home now. You can pull up to the curb right there. I haven't seen you around this neighborhood. Where do you live? That house. That's funny. What's funny about that? That's my home. You must be kidding. No, I'm not kidding. What's that? Something that goes boom, boom, boom. You wouldn't want to hear it, would you? Put that gun away. You're a very foolish young girl to make a move like this. You old guys are pretty silly picking up young girls like me. But you will keep doing it. Well, I'm old enough to be your father. And I don't happen to be the kind of man that picks up young girls like you. Oh, I know all about that kind of a line. Probably have a nice wife and lovely daughters. I have. Now put that gun away and get out of this car. In just a minute. But not yet. Understand? Now start shelling out. Well, where have you been? That train's about to pull out. Oh, I came as soon as I could. Where's your suitcase? I'm not going, Jerry. Not going? Well, why not? Look. Where'd you get that, Sally? It was easy. Like falling off a log. That's why I'm staying here. Well, count me in. I couldn't use you, Jerry. So long. What are you two doing up so late? Sally, look at that clock. Okay, so what? What are you doing out this late? Where have you been? Going places, doing things. We've been waiting up for you for hours. Well, I didn't ask you to. Never mind to give you a good whipping. Good job. She needs it. Maybe you two aren't sleepy, but I am. Good night. What on earth are we going to do with her? should have thought of that years ago. Blame me for everything. You know Sally's always been a wild one. Yes, it's the way you brought her up. The way I brought her up. I've been working my fingers to the bones for years. Cooking, sewing, cleaning, doing without things so that Sally could have them. So she could go with nice girls and make a good appearance. Oh, well, if she don't keep off the streets at night, she'll make her next appearance in jail. Turn that girl over to the juvenile authorities before she does something to disgrace us. I tell you, that girl's boy crazy. You know the time we had keeping her from seeing that Jimmy Courtney. I'm certainly glad he left town. Jimmy. Yes, we were just a couple of kids who loved each other. That was wrong. Sally. What do you want? Turn out that light and get to bed. Oh, Jimmy, I wasn't like this when you were here. I was never interested in anybody but you. I wanted to marry you. To settle down and raise a family like every girl does. But they wouldn't listen to us. Now you'll never be happy and neither will I. I just don't care what happens anymore. <laughs> Look, June, let's go to your house and have it out with your dad, huh? No, he's too hot-headed. He wouldn't give you a chance to explain anything. Hello. Oh, it's you again. Uh, it's me again. 
Now we'll go see Judge Craig. Well, look, can't we just forget about it? Well, as far as you two are concerned, I'll forget what happened last night. We're still going to see Judge Craig. Do you have to do this? You'll thank me for doing it, Rocky. Sorry to disturb you at this time of night, but I thought perhaps you'd talk to these youngsters. I'm afraid they need us. They don't look bad to me. Come in. Well, well, now, what's it all about? Any charges against them? Possibly a misdemeanor. I'd rather not book them at the jail unless there's no other way. That's mighty decent of you, Lieutenant. What seems to be the trouble? Well, Your Honor, there's a gang of kids been working the big markets, snatching women's pocketbooks. Yes, I know, I know. We picked up a boy, Roy Ford and Francine Van Pelt. Young Ford admits grabbing a purse and claims this boy put him up to. Oh, young Fagan, eh, son? No, sir. The name's Rocky Webster. Is it true, Rocky, what the lieutenant said? Oh. No, sir. Not exactly. But I wasn't mixed up in it. And I know Roy wasn't to blame. He wouldn't have done it by himself. Why do you do these things? Oh, I don't know, sir. It's, it's just to get some money to run around with the gang, that's all. Does your father know you run with a gang? No, sir. He never bothers about what I do. And the girl, what about her? June Thompson, Judge. Her trouble's mostly in late hours and bad company. Why do you young people have to keep such unearthly hours? Why aren't you at home, June? I did go home, sir. And you went out again? Yes, sir. My father was waiting up for me. Oh, why don't you tell him, June? He slaps her all over the place for nothing. These other two children, where are they? Oh, they're over at headquarters. You see, Judge, in most of these cases, the parents are more guilty than the children. I agree with you there. Parents. They got me out of a sound sleep. Now take the telephone and get them out of their beds. You're not going to wake my father, are you, Judge? Yes, but don't worry. Get on the telephone, Lieutenant. And I agree with Lieutenant Hanahan that for the time being, at least, any official charges against these children be dropped. So they may not be branded as juvenile delinquents on court record. However, there is a very, very serious indictment against you, the parents, for neglecting to properly rear your children. Joyce, Joyce. I'll come to you in a moment, Mr. Thompson. The obligation to your daughters and sons doesn't end with just feeding them making sure they're washed behind the ears. Oh, no, no, indeed. It goes far deeper. There must be a constant effort made to intelligently direct their social life out of the home as well as in it. Webster, do you think you've given your son Rocky the attention he needs? Who? Me? Yes, you. Why, why, I love my boy. I'd do anything for him. But I'm a poor man. I can't do all I'd like to, but I'll do anything you say, Judge. Anything. I'm going to hold you to that, Mr. Webster. And may I suggest that you spend less time in saloons and more time with your son, Rocky? The boy whose mother couldn't get here. Oh, uh, that's Roy Ford, Judge. She works nights. Uh, that's him sitting over there. Oh, Roy. Yes, sir. Do you understand, young man, that your mother is working to provide you with a home? so that you can go to school and have the advantages of other children? Yes, sir. Well, I'd be ashamed if the moment my mother turned her back, she couldn't trust me. What do you think? I'm sorry, Judge. Honest, I am. I guess the trouble with us kids is we never stop to think enough. I'm glad to hear you say that, Roy. Thank you. Yeah. Now, Mrs. Van Pelt, I understand you are the president of the Afternoon Club. Why, yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Van Pelt, you're a very busy woman, no doubt. In my opinion, far too busy and interested in your clubs and social activities to pause a moment for a heart-to-heart -heart talk with your daughter, Francine. More and more in this day and age, young people need mature advice and guidance. And if they don't get it in their own homes, they're going elsewhere. And that's always dangerous. The tragedy of Lucille Dillerton should remain always fresh in our memory. 
And I can't help but feel if I'd had someone to confide in, to have faith in, she would have been a healthy, normal young lady and living today. You had something to say, Mr. Thompson? Yes, sir, Your Honor. Judge, I agree with everything you've said. The waywardness of my daughter is really my fault. I promise she won't bother you again. Not if I have to beat respectability into her. You believe in physical punishment, then? You're darn right I do. Spare the rod and spoil the child. When I was a boy, I was punished, and punished good. Never did me any harm. Mr. Thompson, as a parent, you have certain privileges. But none of them gives you the right to abuse and maltreat your daughter. It's the only way that I can get her to mind me. I'm afraid you're a man of very violent temper, Mr. Thompson. And I warn you that you'll have to find some more gentle method of maintaining discipline in your home. And if you don't, we'll have to take further measures. I hope you understand that, Mr. Thompson. Yes, sir. Well, there's nothing further to discuss. Thank you all for coming. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Much obliged, Judge. I'm sure this late session will do a lot of good. Well, we'll see if it will. Judge, you're a swell fellow. No, so bad yourself, Steve. Good night. Good night. Good night, Lieutenant. Good night, sir. Can we go? You're on your own. But I want you to promise me something. Yes, sir. You know that little trip you were talking about? Postpone it for a while. Say a couple of years, huh? Okay, fine. So long. Good night. Good night. Good night, kids. You say don't swell sleep lately. They couldn't possibly flunk you out now. No, it's all account of my old lady. She's been reading all that junk in the newspapers. Either I go to school and study, or I don't go out nights. I'm no dope. You know, Sally, I'm almost glad things happened the way they did. It's kind of snapped us all out of it. Hey, Jude, Sally! Rocky, is it really yours? You bet. Hey, June, remember the time when we were going to elope or something? Well, this is a bus that I was going to borrow from that kid. I get it. You borrowed it. In other words, it's hot. Hey, where do you get off with that stuff? I got this a hard way. I worked at the grocery store every night after school as clean as a whistle. You know, I sort of like it that way. Get it? Yeah. Sprouting wings, ain't you? What's it to you? Hey, June, you want to go to show tonight? Sure, Rocky. I'd love to. You too, Sally? We could get Roy. Are you kidding? I don't run around with little boys anymore. Besides, I have a date. Who with? Well, it's none of your business. But it could be Nick Gordon. You sent for me, Nick? Well, yeah, I did. I want to talk to Jerry. You'll excuse us, won't you, baby? Certainly, darling. Sit down, kid. Thanks. Jerry, I generally work alone, but I got a sweet little tip that's too big for me to handle by myself. Hey, count me in, will you? You want to take the short end? Sure, sure, anything. I need some dough, bad. What's the dough? There's a big payroll I've been watching for some time that's just asking to get knocked off. Now, a guy brings it down at 10.45 to pay off the night shift at 11 every Thursday. Yeah, this is Thursday. Right. Friday, you'll be in the dough. Now, you take care of the guard, I'll grab the satchel, and there should be plenty in it for us. You get 10%, okay? Sure, sure it's okay. But, um, I, I ain't got no rod of my own. Open that top drawer. Say, 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 this is really it. Gosh, thanks, Nick. Jerry, you remember that hopped up heap you had that fractured the guy's skull out front? Yeah. Where is it? I... I did what you told me to, Nick. I... I... Don't give me that. You're lying. Where is it? But it ain't hot no more, Nick. On the level. That's all I wanted to know. We're going to use it tonight. <laughs> oh, sure. Sure. Be right with you.
For once, you're a minute early. I was just going to... Get back there. This is a stick-up. Act natural and you won't get hurt. Yeah, you hurt him. Get over there. You be good. Answer him. Okay, Bill. Hold him up. Toss me that satchel. Keep your paws up, you. Don't come out for five minutes. Jerry, open that door. Number A, 3-1447861, Series G. What's this all about? I, uh, do you own a revolver, Mr. Webster? Why, yes, but I have a permit. I know. Where's that gun now? Why, it's, it's home, hidden in a suitcase. That's your gun? It was mixed up in a holdup last night. I, I didn't, I didn't do it. Where were you last night? In, in Mike's beer parlor. I, I wasn't drinking. And, uh, what time did you leave, Mike's? Why, when, when he closed up. I'll check on that. That boy of yours, Rocky, where was he last night? I don't know. My boy? My boy, Rocky? He wouldn't be mixed up in anything like that. I didn't say he was. Oh, thanks. I know if you knew Rocky, He's a, he's a good boy. I tell you, Nick was at my place all last evening. Nick had nothing to do with it. And I tell you, I have lots of witnesses to say so. No doubt about it. Well, there's no need to getting excited, Mimi. This is merely a routine questioning. We've got to do these things when a man is shot and doesn't regain consciousness to speak for himself. Well, I repeat, Nick has nothing to do with it. I didn't say he did. But I'm going to find out who did do it. Well, you won't find out from me. Why don't you let me go? You can go any time you want to. I've got nothing on Nick. But on the other hand, I wouldn't put murder past him. Or you either, for that matter. Why, you flat feet! It's all right, Mimi. I guess Nick is in the clear. If he'd pulled the job, you'd probably have been with him. What do you mean? Oh, nothing. Go on. Let me figure this by myself. Well, the bird I'm looking for had a dame with him. Sally Higgins. He took her with him. Huh? What'd you say, Mimi? Oh, uh, oh nothing. I, I'm just excited. Uh, I'm going. Goodbye. We're picking up Nick Gordon for murder. Put it on the teletype. Hold the radio. I just picked him up the hot tub car. Oh, wait a minute. We didn't do nothing. Now, take it easy, Rocky. What'd you do with that gun you took from your father? What gun? Oh, now listen, son. If you had walked in here ten minutes ago, you'd been mixed up in a murder. I know now you didn't do it. There's one thing I want to find out. Now, come on, Rocky. Tell me about that gun. If you know anything, Rocky, you'd better tell him. Well, I... Rocky, tell him. Tell him what you told me. I didn't mean it. I just swiped her from my dad. I hocked her with... I know, with Nick Gordon. Yeah. Well, it all fits in now. Steve, Nick Gordon's our man. Yeah, I think you got something there. All right, you kids can go. 
Come on, Joe. You come with me. Mind if I tag along? No, no come on. Glad to have you. Thanks. Rocky. Gee, you look scared. I was. It was really a close call. Come on, June, let's get out of here. All right. Hey, they're not losing any time. No. I hope Nick doesn't get away. Hey, let's follow. Oh, calm down. How do you know? Where have you been? Why you were gone? They came to get you. They you, took me. So you squealed on me. Oh, no. No. They know anyway. Oh, you've got to get away. Nick, please hurry. They got nothing on me. But you've got to hurry, and I'll go with you. You're staying here. Oh, Nick. Whatever you've done, I don't care. And wherever you go, I go too. Oh, please, Nick. Take me with you. Oh. You're not going any place, Mimi. Next through with you. Why, he'll never be through with me. Never. No. Why, you... <laughs> Why, do you... you... <laughs> Yeah, but you didn't stop her hard. Come on, enough. let's go. Oh, come on, Nick. Hurry up.
I'm sorry, Mr. Hanahan. I couldn't help it. It was an accident, really. Honest, it was. I know, Rocky. Keep your chin up, sister. Everything's going to be all right. Well, I guess that closes this case. Yeah, it looks like it closes the merry-go-round, too. You're wrong again, Hanahan. The merry-go-round's going to stay open. What? Sure. The kids have to have some place to go to blow off steam. We're going to provide that place for them. Yeah. Who's going to run it? I don't know. Maybe the kids. The who? The kids. That's what I thought you said. Yeah. Steve, let you and I go down and check on this thing. Sure. There ought to be more places like this where the kids can really knock themselves out. You're right, Rocky. And there will be, too. We'll see to that. Come on, Jim. Let's jump. This is what they wanted. Just like I've been telling you. What did you tell me? Mm -hmm. 